What's going on friends? Today we're talking about 100 kettlebell swings a day, but how heavy should the bell be? How many sets should I do? Should I do an EMOM? Should I do them all unbroken? Well, there's all kinds of different ways you can go about it. Let's do some fun stuff and then we'll talk about it. So just in case you haven't been formally introduced, this is my almost one year old Belgian Malinois Amos. Sit. I'm using Amos as a project to learn how to do things. I'm not a dog trainer, but I'm learning how to train my dog by training him. I'm going to make mistakes, I'm gonna screw it up. And it's gonna be harder on him and harder on me, but the point is that we're both doing the work. I think we can translate this into our fitness and personal development journey by just getting to work. It's not necessarily about the weight on the bar, the weight of the kettlebell, how many sets you do, how many reps you do. It's about practicing and seeing how things go and then making adjustments. He's gonna sit here and he's not gonna move until I give him the command. See how it goes. Stay. Hey. Okay. Ah. Uh, give him a little rough him up a little bit. Piss him off. He's strong and he likes to do the job. Let's see if he'll release. Amos, out. Stay. You have to practice and you have to execute consistently over time. That looked really good, but you didn't see all the mistakes I've made over the past year. And that's basically my point with these kettlebell swings kind of have a plethora of kettlebells at our disposal. Some people are not gonna have this many types of bells and that's okay. If I was a lady, which I'm not and I never will be, I would have a 12 kilo and a 16 kilo or a 24 pound and a 35 pound respectively as bells I would start out with. If I was a dude, which I most definitely am and always will be, I will probably start out with a 16 kilo and a 24 kilo or a 35 pound bell and a 53 pound bell, something just a little bit heavier, but those two weights can get you going pretty well. I typically play around with the 53 pound or the 24 kilo. It seems to be kind of the standard men's weight in a lot of these workouts that we do at the gym anyway. Obviously there's some scaled options, but most of the time I'm playing around with the 53 pound bell. I do have a 70 pound bell that I'll throw around and then I also have a 106 pound bell where I'll do some heavier swings. For the most part, this is the set breakdown that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do sets of 10, sets of 20, sets of 25, sets of 50, or just an unbroken set of 100. I don't wanna think about it too much, but depending on the amount of reps per set will probably determine the weight that I use for the actual workout. Now, if you're a smart dude or a smart dudette, you could probably put together the sets of 10 are probably going to be heavier weights. Sets of 20, a little lighter. Sets of 25, even lighter. Sets of 50, exponentially more light. And then the 100, even lighter than that inside this realm of possibilities with the heavier bells you can do bigger sets if you want with the lighter bells you can do smaller sets you can pick and choose maybe depending on how you're feeling for the day but really the point is the 100 swings is an anchor some variation on a daily basis is good for novelty's sake but also just getting different types of stimulus I'm gonna go through some swings at all the different weights and kind of show you how they should all look the same, but it's gonna make you feel a little bit differently, obviously, if the sets are bigger or smaller and if the weight is heavier or lighter. So before we get started with all these kettlebell swings, I wanna talk about today's sponsor real quick. And today's sponsor is me, yours truly. 
I've been doing a lot of Instagram work here recently, very short and concise little pockets of content, like 30 seconds, sometimes 40 seconds. Go over there and check it out. Here's a little blip of it, and then you can go check it out after the video. Fitness is comically simple, but the internet has done an amazing job at confusing people to no end. These are the basic tenets that I follow. Push, pull, squat, swing. I'll add in deadlift as well, but I thought those four words sounded better together, and honestly, I view the swing as an explosive deadlift anyway. I want to use these movements in moderate to heavy applications. I will also use these movements to get my heart rate up every once in a while as well. I want to take those lifts and create some sort of a structured plan that I implement at least three to six times a week. After being a gym owner and coach for approximately 13 years, I know that everyone needs to lift weights and and get their heart rate up a few times a week for the rest of their lives. So as you can see, we have a plethora of bells here. 106 pounds, 70 pounds, 53 pounds, 35, and 24 pounds. This guy typically will do sets of 10, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Just kind of depends on what I'm feeling for the day. For the 70, you know, I'll do sets of 10, maybe 20, maybe 25. I would say my go-to is the 24 kilo, 25 swings, four sets of that. 25 times four is 100, just in case you didn't know. If you find yourself in possession of female genitalia, AKA if you are a lady, I would start with the 24 pound bell or the 12 kilo bell, depending on where you're from in the world. Mainly because if you get anything lighter, it's gonna kinda give you an excuse to possibly do this squat front raise and not do a proper hip hinge. I feel like when you get to the 24 pound bell, you kinda have to, you have to do it the right way. And that's what we wanna do. We want to give your body a reason to do the movement properly. If you are the proud owner of the Twig and Berries framework, or you're a dude, I would start with the 35 pound bell, just a little bit heavier than the ladies, but if you don't have enough weight to give your body a reason to act properly, same thing for the ladies. You might end up doing this front raise. With a 35 pound bell, it's a little too heavy to do that. You can do that with one of these. I can pick this bell up and just do a front raise. Now, because this weight is light enough and I can get away with doing that, sometimes we'll start to create this habit of doing something the wrong way. With a 35 pound bell, honestly, I could probably do it, but I think it's just enough weight to teach someone how to do it properly. Whenever I'm teaching someone how to do kettlebell swings for the first time, the ladies always get the 24 pound bell and the dudes always get the 35. Like I said before, the 24 kilo or the 53 pound bell is my go-to. It's the one that I've played with the most. It feels the most natural, mainly because it's the one I use the most and it's just the way it is. But the point is, is that you can pick any rep range. You can pick any weight. The point is just doing it. I see so many people talking about how to do it and they don't just do it. Pick up the bell, do a set of 10 to start out with. Maybe you do 10 and you're like, man, that was super easy. I bet I could do 20. I bet you could too. If you did five sets of 20, that gives you 100 reps. And then maybe you do that for a few weeks and it gets so easy and you're like, I think I wanna order the 70 pound bell. If you're a lady, if you wanna be like, man, I think I can go up to the 53 pound bell. If your husband is an absolute weak ass and you wanna show him who's boss, then make sure you get a 24 kilo and swing it around a little bit. If you're a dude and you want to absolutely live up to your highest masculine expectation, you should be swinging a bell that's heavier than your wife's, period. Show her the man that she deserves with your daily actions and the weight you choose with a kettlebell. We're gonna start with the heaviest bell because that's the most respectable thing to do, right? 10 swings at 106 pounds. respect and poise. Moving on to the 70, one of my favorite cues for making sure the bell is up under my crotch where it needs to be. I wanna feel the outside of these handles on the inside of my legs, right up under the boys if you know what I'm saying. 10 swings at 70.
There's obviously a lot of factors that go into the swing. It's not just about a good hip hinge, but these handles typically get bigger as the handles or as the bells get heavier. When you're grabbing this bell, grip strength might feel differently with a lighter bell to a heavier bell because the diameter of the handle is a little bit bigger. So gripping the bell is important, making sure the bell handle is in the crease of the fingers in the palm and not deep up in here, smashing this callus point. Let's do 10 swings with the 53 pound. This time I'll go off on even another tangent. As the bell gets lighter, kind of the standard Russian kettlebell swings are obviously gonna feel easier. So what can you do to make a lighter bell more difficult to work with? And something that is pretty obvious to me, but maybe not others, is instead of doing Russian swings, go to single arm swings. Maybe if single arm swings are also easy at this weight, is that you can incorporate doing more technical movements like the kettlebell clean or the kettlebell snatch even. It's great to learn on weights that seem pretty easy doing swings with, but once you start going overhead, it's totally different. We'll do 10 single arm swings and I'll change each hand. Maybe I'll do some snatches. Tactical switch. Oh. Almost broke my Apple Watch. That's a way that you can kind of change things up, make the stimulus different, make it interesting. This is why I love kettlebell so much, because you can change the application and the stimulus endlessly with one tool. Remember folks, don't overthink this stuff. It's easy to get off into the weeds and distract yourself from the actual work. The key is to just do the work, change it up, try a heavier bell, try a lighter bell, it doesn't matter. Tell me what you think, tell me what you did, and we'll see you next time.